and of course of the signs of the Mahdi is that he shall be the ruler of the entire Muslim Ummah. It is crystal clear that the phenomenon of the Mahdi will not be a local or regional revolution, rather it will be an international one encompassing the entire world as we know it. He shall be the undisputed leader of all the Muslims from east to west. And there are many explicit references to this in the hadith that we have quoted earlier. Of them is the hadith that we said of Abu Dawood where the Prophet ﷺ said, if there were only one day left, Allah would make that day longer and he shall fill the earth with justice. So he fills the entire earth. In another hadith which is authentic, reported in At-Tabarani's Al-Mu'jam Al-Kabir, the Prophet said, Yali amra hadhihi al-umma fi akhiri zamaniha rajulu min ahli bayti. He said, this matter or this umma of ours shall be governed at the end of time, a person from my household. In other words, a person from my household shall take charge of the affairs of this entire umma. Yali amra hadhihi al-umma. And this clearly shows that he shall rule over all the Muslims. And of course, that's the whole point. The Mahdi will be one who is rightly guided and spreads righteousness in the entire earth. He shall affect the entire world and he shall fill it with justice and righteousness as it was filled with evil and oppression before his time. Likewise, we know from a hadith that we have quoted that the Mahdi shall rule for seven years. In other words, after this allegiance is given to him at the Kaaba and he becomes the undisputed head of the Muslim Ummah, the entire Muslims will recognize that this is the Mahdi, he shall then live for seven years after this event. And this has already been reported where the Prophet ﷺ said, يَمْلِكُ سَبْعَ سِنِينَ The hadith of Abu Dawood that we quoted earlier, he shall rule for seven years. In some ahadith, the Prophet ﷺ basically gave other opinions. He said, he shall rule for seven or eight or nine. And he shall fill the earth with justice and the earth shall sprout forth its produce and vegetation and the sky shall send its rain. This is a hadith in the Musnad Imam Ahmad. The hadith is authentic. However, the other hadith clearly mentions seven. So it is possible that in the beginning, the Prophet ﷺ did not know whether he would rule for seven or eight or nine. So he said he shall rule for seven or eight or nine. And later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed him it will be seven. So he explicitly mentioned that it would be seven years after that. Another sign of the Mahdi is that he shall enjoy the greatest khilafah ever known to men. It is reported in the Sahih of Imam Muslim from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri and also from Jabir ibn Abdullah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there shall come towards the end of time a khalifa who shall distribute money and not even count it. Just give money to the people. And of course this hadith, although it doesn't mention the Mahdi, it is a reference to him and it is of the ahadith that are from Bukhari and Muslim that hint towards the Mahdi. Other ahadith clearly mention that he shall distribute money justly and equally amongst the people. And in the hadith that I just quoted you from the Musnad Imam Ahmad, the Prophet ﷺ told us that the earth shall sprout forth its produce and the sky shall send down their rain. In another version of this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, and during his time, my ummah shall live a life the like of which they have never lived before. They shall enjoy a life the like of which they have never lived before. In the Mustadrak of Al-Hakim, in another hadith reported from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, an authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, the Mahdi shall appear in the end of times, in the last of the ummah. Allah will cause the rain to fall for him and the earth shall produce its fruit and he shall distribute money justly. The livestock will flourish and the ummah shall excel. He shall live seven or eight years. Al-Hakim said it was an authentic hadith and a dhahabi agreed with him and it is as they said. So from all of these ahadith, it is clear that the reign of the Mahdi will be a time of great rejoice, of very great comfort. In fact, the greatest that the Ummah has ever seen. Of course, this does not mean that the Mahdi shall be better than Abu Bakr and Umar or the companions, for of course, Abu Bakr and Umar are better than him. However, even though these companions are greater and more noble in the sight of Allah than the Mahdi, the Mahdi shall have certain privileges over them. And of these privileges is that during his time, the Ummah shall excel and reach the height of opulence and the height of luxury in that nobody will be hungry, people will have money, people will live comfortable lives the likes of which they have never lived before. And the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith that I just quoted that the Ummah shall ta'azum or live greatly, grow, excel, reach fame and glory. And he said that the Ummah shall never live like they have lived during his time.
Likewise, the Prophet ﷺ praised the Mahdi and his methodology and said that the Mahdi would be upon the methodology of the Prophet ﷺ in a very, very interesting hadith. A hadith that really and truly every Muslim should be aware of. And it is narrated in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed with an authentic isnad. Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman said, and ponder over this hadith. It's a beautiful hadith as I said. The Prophet ﷺ said, there shall be prophethood amongst you as long as Allah wills. And then Allah will lift it up when He wills to lift it up. And then there shall be a khilafah upon the minhaj and nubuwa, upon the prophetic methodology. And it will last as long as Allah wills it to last. And then Allah will lift it up when Allah wills it to be lifted up. And then there shall be a mulkan aadhan, a kingdom that is hereditary. In other words, there shall come a kingdom and the kingdom shall be hereditary. A son shall inherit from his father. And this shall last as long as Allah wills it to last. And then Allah will lift it up when he wills it to lift it up. And then there shall be a mulkan jabriya, a time of oppression, a kingship of oppression. And it will last as long as Allah wills it to last. And then Allah will lift it up when he wills. ثُمَّ تَكُونُ خِلَافَةً عَلَى مِنْهَاجِ النُّبُوَّةِ And then there shall return a khilafa upon the prophetic methodology. And then the Prophet ﷺ was quiet. This is the hadith in the Musnad Imam Ahmad. So look at how the Prophet ﷺ is dividing the ends of times into five stages. The first of them, the period of nubuwa, And that ended with the death of the Prophet ﷺ. The second of them, the period of the rightly guided khalifas. And that ended with the death or the murder of Ali ibn Abi Talib. The third of them, he said, shall be hereditary kings, one kingdom after another. That began with the best king the Muslims have ever seen, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. And he is the best king because he is the companion of the Prophet ﷺ. No king can ever be as just and as noble as he was. So he started the kingship and it shall last for as long as Allah wills it to last. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, there shall be a different form of government a government that is not hereditary. And this government, the Prophet ﷺ described it as being jabriya, as being unjust and tyrannical. And he said, this will last as long as Allah wills it to last. The fifth of them then is the khilafa ala minhaj nubuwa, the methodology of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, of course, he didn't say that it will be the Mahdi, but of course it applies to him. Who else will come and apply the khilafa ala minhaj nubuwa other than the Mahdi? And this will last until the end of time. And that is why he was quiet. With the death of Isa alayhi salam, the day of judgment will come immediately after that. And this goes without saying that the Mahdi shall be upon the proper aqidah and methodology. And this is really, I mean, you don't even have to mention any evidences for it. It is clearly understood that someone whom Allah has blessed to such an extent and who will fill the entire earth with justice and who will be the undisputed leader of the entire Muslim Ummah, he will of course be a person of knowledge and a person of the proper Aqidah theology and follow the Quran and Sunnah upon the understanding of the early generations.